Hello friends, welcome to Creator King. For today's first invention, we'll need a medicine syringe. Remove the support and then with our sharp box cutter, slice the liquid outlet, leaving both ends open. Maybe if I had warmed it up, it would have worked better. Once we have disposed of that piece, we'll be able to use this as the confetti container. Oops, I just revealed to you what it is and we're not even halfway through the video. Get a piece of cardboard and apply your favorite instant glue to the tabs of the syringe base. Then glue it near the short edge of the cardboard rectangle. With our confetti launching tower ready, let's proceed to the electrical sequence. We are already going to start playing with electricity? Even I didn't expect that. But it is logical since this video contains a lot of volts. Once we are sure that sparks are present, get two tacks like the ones used on the boards at school. Wrap the exposed strands of our voltage booster around the tip of each tack to allow the energy to flow through them. These office supplies must be inserted into the body of the syringe through two small holes we previously created so that they make contact with whatever is inside. Apply instant glue on the flat base of the enhancer and glue it in place. Then immediately call the police to warn them about the party we're going to have when we finish dismantling their supercar. Take the crosshead screwdriver out of the toolbox and add a magnet so you don't lose the screws you remove. Have any of you bought one of those confetti-filled tubes that when you twist them, release a cloud of festive papers? Once I took one to school to celebrate a friend's birthday. We blew it in his face and he had to clean up the mess we made. It was a nice birthday. Then last year he took revenge on me by throwing confetti in my mouth. With the soldering iron, melt the connections that are preventing us from removing the electrical circuit. Extract the board together with the piece of copper colored paper. These blue and white wires from the trolley will be connected to the green and red wires from the voltage booster. Next, use the soldering iron to fuse them together. Get some of this colorful insulating tape to cover the connections so that we don't cause an accident. Always remember to take precautions. After wrapping the connections, fill the battery slots which will supply the power to our confetti launcher. Reattach the electronic board to the remote controlled car structure with a screw and glue the switch to the voltage booster with some instant glue. Now we just need to place this piece of coppery paper. But first, put the body of our supercar back on to give it a more attractive touch. I mean, your car, Mr. Policeman. I promise to return it to you intact. But please don't arrest me. We are ready to party. We simply have to turn on the invention and press a button on the remote control to make the sparks come out. Let's hope that the pieces of paper don't ignite. To prepare the first load of confetti, spray some of this liquid inside the container. Then remove the rubber piece from the syringe support so that it works as a stopper to prevent what I was just worrying about a few moments ago from happening and the little pieces of paper from being projected. How did it not occur to me? You think of everything, Kevin. With the load of confetti ready, all we have to do is press the button you see on the screen to fill the sky with colors. Turn up the music and let's party. What was that? Party rockers in the house tonight. Everybody just have a good time. With the next invention, you'll never have to worry about your freshly wasted clothes getting wet in the rainy season. In addition to the mini can of Pringles, we'll need a couple of syringe needles and a bottle of Coca-Cola. Remove the screw cap and get a large container like the big glass you see on the screen to empty all that sugary liquid. With your box cutter, slice the top of the bottle mercilessly until it comes off completely. This piece will be the only one we'll need from the bottle along with the screw cap we saved a few seconds ago. Take some toilet paper out of the bathroom to wipe off any drops of liquid that may remain stuck on the surface of our future funnel. Screw the cap back on and proceed to uncover these dreaded needles, which we will heat to high temperatures with the help of a lighter so they can easily pierce the plastic. Leave them inserted there. Reminds me of elementary school when kids in my class used to stick tacks in the first layer of skin. Lunatic children. To hold the needles in place, apply some instant glue on both exits. When we have this part of the invention ready, we can move on to the wiring and circuitry. Except today, we'll use a new element for a change. It's a kind of alarm. The only difference is that it makes a loud noise, but otherwise it will be the same as always. 
Get a snap wire and connect the strands of both red wires together. The other wires will be connected to the needles so that the sound will only be heard when the water touches the metal of the needles. Get your multi-purpose tool and use it to create several holes on one side of the can of delicious fried food. I made seven in total in a circular shape since it's the perfect amount for the size of our alarm, which we will glue immediately on the inside of the container where the holes are. Create a couple of holes on the clear Pringles cover through which you'll insert the black alarm wires and the snap. Then plug in the 9 volt battery and tuck it inside to keep everything neat and tidy. Close the lid and give the wires a slight tug before reconnecting them to the needle tips located on the funnel and gluing it onto the can. The next step will be to create some protection so that water does not enter the side holes causing a short circuit. For this, we'll need another Coca-Cola cap which we'll slice in half like a cake. Only one half will be needed, so you can discard the rest. Remove the top half of this piece and just keep the side part. Apply some super glue and join it to the Pringles can a bit above where the holes are. This will act as an umbrella, I hope. Although if it rained diagonally, it'd all be for nothing. Well, I hope that doesn't happen. Well, it's a perfectly cloudy day out here. It would be an excellent idea to leave my clothes that I just washed out to dry. What was that? Or not, my beautiful lavender scented t-shirt is going to get soaked. I have to save it. I never imagined that it would rain. For the last invention of the day, we need a power plug from an old appliance. Remove the screw with your screwdriver and magnet, and you'll be able to see its interior is also full of screws. We'll have to add several components to this piece like a pair of red and black wires, remove the coating to expose the metal strands where the hundreds of thousands of volts will run. Wrap each of the wires around the pins of the plug, twisting as if it were a spring and making sure that the exposed wire is in contact with the metallic part of the plug. What beautiful coils we've made! Take that, Mr. Tesla. Do you think you were the only one who could make beautiful coils? You guys remember that a good Samaritan had to explain to me in the comments what this object was for, but he didn't tell me the name. Well, thanks to another subscriber named Christopher, I now know that it's called a high voltage source. In addition to the source, we will need a 9 volt square battery and his faithful friend the ever-present wired snap. And a bright red switch. Let's start with the connections. You already know that I'd prefer to talk to you during this part than to explain what most of you already know. And besides, it's so simple that even my five-year-old cousin could do it. So, I finally saw the movie about that spider guy. I mean, Spider-Man. One of the best Marvel movies I've ever seen. The post credit scenes were sublime. I can't wait for the new Doctor Strange movie to come out. Did you like it? While you discuss the film in the comments, let's proceed to the next step once all the connections are made. Turning on your soldering iron to start soldering the connections we made just a few moments ago so nothing comes loose. Once everything concerning the electrical system is finished, return to your plug and coils. Take your crosshead screwdriver and magnet to remove the screws holding the pins in place so you can make the last and most important connections. Insert the loose wires from the high voltage source through the holes in the metal cover underneath the pins. Tighten those screws again and assemble the plug without forgetting to tighten the central screw that holds everything. Once you're sure that it won't come loose for anything in the world and ensuring that a powerful spark is created between the two coils when you press the red button, you'll be ready for the finishing touches. Cover each connection with some colored tape as a final safety measure protecting us from any short circuits. To assemble the body of our anti-attack system, bring a ruler and a long piece of cardboard. Measure 7 centimeters with the ruler on the shortest side and make a mark that works as a reference. On the longest side, measure 13 centimeters and join the dots with a pencil to form an elongated rectangle, which we will then separate from the piece of cardboard using our sharp box cutter. Repeat the previous steps to make two totally identical pieces that will form part of the box. On one of the remaining pieces of cardboard, measure a few centimeters to obtain two shorter and smaller rectangles, which I'll extract with the secret technique of the karate chop. 
Finally, mark two points at three and six centimeters to create the last two thin, elongated rectangles that will suffer the same fate as the last two. With all the pieces of our little box in front of us, proceed to assemble them by applying super glue on a wider rectangle to glue the components to it, starting with the plug and the high voltage source. Apply the transparent sticky substance in a long, thin piece of cardboard to glue the first wall of the box. Continue gluing, connecting and making the appropriate cuts that will be needed until the box is completely closed. Have you ever bought any of these devices to give people shocks? Recently, my uncle bought one that you can change the intensity on to see who could hold on the longest. I can proudly tell you that I withstood up to the maximum intensity, but my muscles feel the consequences now. My hands were like a T-Rex. Our system is ready and works great. But I wouldn't be able to call myself an artist if I didn't give my 101% effort and decorate the box. With any color marker, write the discharge voltage of our system on one side. And on the other side, draw a bolt that illustrates its power. ka -chow! With such a modern design, our enemies would be glad to receive these 400,000 volts into their bodies. With this, we'll be like the villain in Spider-Man. I think he was called Electron or Electrocuton. It had something to do with electricity. Ready? Who wants to be the first volunteer to try it out? No one? Don't be afraid, it's just a few shocks. Look, Mr. Matt's just set himself on fire. This will only cause you guys some slight internal burns. It's nothing, okay? I'll continue lighting matches. Thanks for watching our inventions made out of household items today. Follow my channel if you'd like to learn more about making simple yet incredible inventions. Also, click on the link to see more videos about my amazing inventions. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial.